so what I'm going to do today, this is an Amiga 600 PSU. This is A300 on the bottom because that's what they used to be called before they changed the name. And uh, this power supply is dead and I've already taken the lead off it. So I already salvaged the power cable a while back to use for an ATX power supply, but it does work, the ATX power supply, but the way I've wired it up is a bit janky. So what I've done is I've bought a meanwhile power supply. I'm hoping it fits inside this box. And if it does, it should be able to power an Amiga 600 or even a 1200, I think. So I just need to salvage these cables, this switch, and get the old cable back for the, uh, the, the end that connects to the Amiga. And everything else in here just goes in the bin. This is the meanwhile power supply I've got. It's an RT50B, plus five, plus 12, and minus 12 volts, this one does. So in theory, this can provide enough current to power an Amiga, and it's a nice little tiny switching power supply. The question is, could it actually fit in here? And the answer is it looks like it'll, well, I think it's gonna fit, oh, it might be very tight. If I can get this out, I can just have a go and see if this fits. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Giant thick bodge wire on the bottom. That fat cable gets the earth wire from the mains through to the grounding on the, on the shield on the cable on the Amiga, I think. So that's the salvage bit I need. I just needed the cable and the switch. That's gonna go back. I'll go back in there. Way, look at that. That totally fits. There's loads of room in here because this thing goes on top as well. Wow. So the cables for the Amiga side will have to come over the top here and into here. And the main side can just go straight into the, yeah, the mains parts here. Might have to extend these or whatever. Oh, this is gonna be pretty good. So I will need some way to hold this in, otherwise it's just gonna flap around. It does have some screw. Where does it have screw holes? I don't exactly know how I'm gonna hold this in there. I mean, I could just glue it to the bottom. So there's my connections, except they won't reach. So I'm gonna to have to extend them. This is an, I think it's an EU mains plug. So I'm just gonna cut up this to get to extend these wires because uh, I'm in the UK, so this is no use to me anyway. This is the Amiga end of the cable and that will go in there. And um, that's not gonna reach over to, this is where the terminals are for this. So that's not gonna to get to there. I found this little Molex connector that was on a fan, an old fan that was gonna be thrown away. Because I only need four wires for the actual connections. I need, so it's ground plus 12 and minus 12, I think. So it's got four wires in there, they're the wrong colors. Uh, I've only got three colors. It looks like these have two grounds in them but I can just cut that off there and then I could wire this on and then I've got like a little Molex connector coming out of there. So then I could wire a Molex connector onto the other end of that and just connect them in. I found this old junk power supply and check this out. Pentium 4, but I can cut one of the Molex connectors off this, wire that onto the Amiga end and then I can just plug it in when it's done. So that's the theory, it's just connecting a lot of wires together and hopefully, and there's loads of room in here to put the Molex connector in, so that'll all be totally fine. I've got three wires to extend the mains cables. So I've got those connected, I just put some heat shrink over them. Right, there we go. So I'll just check that they actually work. Next step is wiring this thing in. I could put some heat shrink over one of these to signify V1 is plus five, V2 is plus 12, V3 is minus 12. I'll cut this up as close to here as I can. Strip these ends and then these just wire on. So I'm just gonna put a bit of green heat shrink on one of them just to show that it's not a ground wire. So I'll have ground, this one won't be ground, plus 12, and this yellow one will be minus 12. There we go, so there's my little Molex connector. 
So that can just stick up over the top and then I'll be able to plug the Amiga power supply into that there. So the next step is to get a Molex connector onto this so that I can link it up to there. So I can just, uh, once it's on, I'll be able to just slot that in there, slot that in there and then just plug them together. And then I've got my Amiga side connected. Now I've got to remember what exactly these colors are. All I remember is, is that yellow is actually the shield, but I'll have to check. So Pentium 4, it's gonna get butchered, I'm afraid. It's crazy, isn't it? I'm using a Pentium 4 power supply to fix like a 1991 Amiga. <laughs> it's just crazy. This Molex connector will go into there. Boom. And then these will get connected. There's just tons of room <laughs> to get that in there, so there's no reason to cut these shorter than they need to be. Whoa. So the theory is this power supply, even though it's small, has got enough juiced to run the Amiga 600. And I checked, there was a site in line that had recorded the power uh, usage by the Amiga 600 and the 1200, even with lots of peripherals in. And this power supply, even though it's very small, uh, should have enough juice to power even an upgraded Amiga. This could power the Amiga 1200 as well. I think this is a pretty good solution to modernizing an Amiga power supply because this fits just perfectly. Right, so I've got those stripped. Which color is which? And I did do this once before and I've got to go and remember again. I think I'll look it up. I've got the special marker to know that that's not ground. It's actually, this one here is actually green and it matches up with this one. So that's on my heat shrink on. So this is plus five volts, bottom corner pin. Yep. There we go, all good. And I covered up the loose ground wire that I'm not gonna use. So I just wire these in and try not to blow myself up. This is now plugged in. Be careful, I don't touch any of this stuff now because that's live now. And, oh, a little power light came on. That's a good sign. This should be my five volts, which it is 5.1 plus 11, B minus 12. I think I've wired those in correctly. Next step would be to plug this in. Careful not to touch. I'll turn this off. Oop. Measure what we get out of this end. Yeah, so there is a five volt adjust. So I might give that a little tweak and just get it closer to five, because uh, it's just a little bit over, but I don't think that's necessary for the Amiga. Oh, there we go. So I can just put all this in the case and try it in an Amiga, I suppose. This thing goes in here. Yeah, so it's not great how close these mains wires come to these secondary ones, but I don't know how much of a problem that's gonna be. You might get interference or something like that. These wires aren't shielded, so I don't know. Right, so it's just a question of getting the lid on. I've left the wires a bit long, so I wish I'd have cut these a bit shorter now. You couldn't like turn this upside down at the moment. Right, so there it is. So meanwhile, power supply inside uh, an Amiga A600 case, which fits with room to spare, but just I haven't found a way to fix it in yet. So as I've tested the voltages on this, I suppose the next thing to do is power up an Amiga and find out if this thing is a pass or fail. Right, so this is the moment of truth. I've got Toki. I know this works on this particular Amiga, which I've just got hooked up here. I've got a joystick, but I haven't got a keyboard plugged in. I think I can play this without a keyboard. Power supply's off at the moment. And there it is. It looks just like a normal Amiga power supply. Except it's totally not. The question is, is it going to blow it up uh, or not? Here goes nothing. Smoke test. Oh, that sounds good already. Oh, yeah. I haven't got any sound plugged into this computer, unfortunately. Hey, look at this. It's a stealth Amiga power supply. It's total stealth. It looks like the old one, but it's actually totally modern inside. <laughs> and as I expected, this, uh, uh, what was it, RT50B or something? Meanwhile, power supply has totally got enough juice, at least for the Amiga 600. Apparently, it'll do the 1200 as well. Oh, yeah. So the, the ATX power supply that I, that I wired up a while back, it, it totally worked, but it was 
it just had like cables hanging out everywhere. In fact, it's it's down here on the floor. I was using that like super fancy ATX power supply. But this one's way better because uh, once I've fixed it inside the case, um, it just totally matches the Amiga and everything. I'm really glad that the Meanwhile power supply fits inside the case because I, I measured it from the specs and I thought that looks like it'll fit, but will it? You can get a bigger version of that power supply with slightly more power, but um, it's bigger, the power supply is bigger and it won't fit in this case. So this one, oh, I nearly messed that up again. So this one is uh, totally functional and fits inside an existing Amiga power supply, which is great. Oh, I wish I had the sound for this. Oh, sh damn it. I need to find a way to fix this inside the case because it's currently just rattling around and there's not much room to fix it in there. Um, so I think the, the proper design for this would be to get like a, a PCB for it or something. And then you could mount it onto the PCB and you could pass the cables through and it'd be all really nice. But I think this is a really good way of um, resurrecting an Amiga power supply. Just take the case, throw the old one away and get yourself a nice modern power supply with the old janky Commodore look. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. So there we go. Meanwhile, power supply, stealth inside Amiga case.